Check out these patterns. They emerge from the powers of complex numbers. We begin here. This is the number 1. Well, actually, it's a bunch of rectangles. This is 1, but we're calculating mod 11i, meaning that 1 is congruent to 1 plus 11i, and 1 minus 11i, and 1 plus any multiple of 11i. So this is the first frame. Everything congruent to 1, mod 11i. To move to the next frame, we multiply by 1 plus i, which gives us different rectangles. And for the following frame, we multiply again by 1 plus i, to get even more rectangles. If we let this process continue, we get a nice pattern. This is the powers of 1 plus i, mod 11i. If we take 2 plus i as the base, we get a different pattern. And we get yet another using 3 plus i. The pattern with 4 plus i looks like TV static. You know, when it goes like <laughs> By using mod 11i, we've essentially cut the plane into 11 by 11 grids, all equal to each other. So we can focus on just the middle one. Oh, or the left one, that's fine. Now there are only 40 rectangles. This is the 1 plus i pattern, so we go through 40 powers, then repeat meaning that 1 plus i to the 40 equals 1, the starting point. At least this is true mod 11i. So then the following frame tells us that 1 plus i to the 41 equals itself. We can do the same thing with the 2 plus i pattern. This has 30 rectangles, so 2 plus i repeats after 30 powers, and therefore 2 plus i to the 31 equals itself. And then the 3 plus i pattern has 24 rectangles, so its 25th power equals itself. And then the has 120 rectangles, so 4 plus i to the 121 equals itself. These equations all look like Fermat's little theorem, which says that if Ikratkaya is an integer and Myakiznak is prime, then Ikratkaya to the Myakiznak equals Ikratkaya mod Myakiznak. For example, 4 to the 3 is 4 mod 3. And also 3 to the 5 is 3 mod 5. In this video, we'll see why this theorem works, and how we can apply it to complex numbers. Oh, sorry, I thought the logo was gonna- Ah! Let's take a look at the powers of 2 mod 31. We have 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 60, wait a sec, we're in mod 31, so 32 equals 1. And then 64 equals 2, 128 equals 4. We're just repeating the earlier powers. The powers of 2 make a loop of length 5. And it's not just the powers. If we start at 3, and then times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2, we also get a loop of length 5. We've basically just tripled everything in the original loop. And this looping happens in general. For any starting number, we get a loop of length 5, because 2 to the 5 is 1, mod 31. The only exception is 31 itself, since itself times 2 is itself mod itself. So these six loops of length 5 contain all 31 values, with one exception. And we know that 2 to the 5 equals 1, so we can raise both sides to the 6th power, and then do a little alge, and we have 2 to the 31 is 2 mod 31. It follows Fermat's little theorem. In the general case, the powers of Ikratkaya must eventually repeat, since there are only finite different values in modular arithmetic. So Ikratkaya to some loop length equals 1. But there may be a bunch of other loops, too. If Myakiznak is prime, then every value is in one of these loops, except for Myakiznak itself. So the count of loops times the loop length accounts for all Myakiznak values, with one exception. We can then take these equations, do a little alge, and we get Fermat's little theorem. Great! But how does this work with complex integers? Our first example used 1 plus i mod 11i. How do we apply the complex component? We don't! That came from this earlier equation, where Myakiznak was the count of distinct values mod Myakiznak. That works for a natural prime, but we can't have 11i distinct values. Mod 11i split the plane into 11 by 11 grids, so there are 121 distinct values. 
and therefore the count of loops times the loop length must be 120. Multiplying by 1 plus i gives us 3 loops of length 40. With 2 plus i we have 4 loops of length 30. With 3 plus i we have 5 loops of length 24. And with 4 plus i we have just 1 of length 120. This equation is always true. So any ikratkaya to its loop length is 1, and we can raise to the count of loops, do a little alge, and we have our result. But this is specific to mod 11i. The 121 is the number of rectangles in this 11 by 11 grid. And we get this grid because for any starting point, we can add or subtract 11i, which moves us 11 units vertically, and we can add or subtract 11i times i, which moves us lefty-righty. So we'll always be able to get into this grid, because the side lengths are 11. What about the general case, mod of any Miyakiznak? Given some starting point, we can add or subtract Miyakiznak, which will move in some direction, and we can add or subtract Miyakiznak times i, which will move us perpendic. So we'll always be able to get into this tilted grid. How many values are in the grid? The side lengths are the size of Miyakiznak, so the area is the size squared. Okay, but how do we calculate the, the size? The Pythag theorem! The size of Miyakiznak is its distance from zero, and we can split it into real and imaginary parts, which are separated by a right angle, meaning that we can apply the Pythag theorem. The real part squared plus the imaginary part squared equals the size squared. And this size squared is called the norm. The area of the grid is the norm of Miyakiznak, and this area gives us the number of distinct values. So that's our exponent. Ikratkaya to the norm of Miyakiznak equals Ikratkaya mod Miyakiznak. This is for Ma's complex Lil theorem. For example, if Miyakiznak is 8 plus 3i, then the norm is 8 squared plus 3 squared, or 73. So this equation should work. Let's try it out. If we multiply by 2 plus 2i, we get a loop length of 24. So then 2 plus 2i to the 24 is 1, and we can cube both sides, do a little alge, and we get the little theorem. And because we had to cube both sides, there must be three different loops. We get this loop if our starting point is 1, but we get a different loop if we start with 2, and a third loop if we start with 4. As another example, let's use mod 10 plus i, and multiply by 2 minus 3i. We get a loop length of 20. There are 5 different loops, since 5 times 20 is the norm minus 1. And here are some other patterns. While you watch, I'd like to thank all of my recent supporters. A bunch of you are new! Thanks for helping out the channel. There are a lot more of these patterns, so I made a sketch where you can explore them yourself. Click the less than slash greater than icon to open the code. And don't worry if you can't write code, that's okay. We only need to change these three lines. We'll set the modulus to 3 plus 10i, the multiplier to 2 plus 5i, and the starting point to 1 minus 4i. Then press play. Nice. So go and enjoy the site, and don't let the bedbugs bite.